We hit it at the London Eye. We went to see if there'd be a protest. There was a couple of people there, as you might see in the video. Uh, I don't know, maybe 15 to 20 people max. Not many folk, right? But it's all right. We'll see what happens in the future. I imagine it's going to get a bit more tense when people start running out of food or the furlough dries up or police get more intense or they start pushing that tracking app or whatever. We'll see what happens. In any case, we spoke to some folk there. We got some interesting perspectives. Uh, we went up to the hospital just over there and we had a bit of an interesting encounter with the security guards. But before that, we spoke to, we tried to speak to some of the staff. None of them wanted to talk to us. They didn't want to be filmed. And interestingly, they said that they're not allowed to speak to us, which is quite interesting, kind of like a military setup where they have to get permission to give their opinions. Um, they mentioned confidentiality. I'm not sure how saying, I think the lockdown's bullshit is a confidential, a breach of confidentiality, but who knows? They didn't want to speak to us anyway. We walked around. After a while, uh, a couple of security guards came down and you're going to hear some of that, I hope. Uh, it was an interesting discourse, seemingly lack of freedom of speech in this country and freedom of the press, it seems to. And a wee security guard called me a boy as well. That was funny. It's always the small ones. Uh, so we left the park. We spoke to the guy a bit more, didn't give us much information, only that we need to speak. We need to make an appointment with the press officer or some shit with that hospital to get uh, permission to ask people their opinions, which I imagine are going to be scripted. Otherwise, why would they need to get permission? So, uh, kind of a dark time, man. Not many protesters, many people following the government line and people in the hospital not allowed to, refusing to speak to us and then we get kicked out. We're going to speak to some police officers, but they cycled away on their bikes. So maybe that's uh, an idea for a future conversation. Um, in any case, uh, maybe you should try it too if you're interested. Maybe you can go outside one of your hospitals, catch somebody smoking in a respiratory crisis and ask them what they think about uh, the virus. And we're out. Hi. What's going on? In a public place. It's not a public place, it's a private, private ground. Place. It's a private ground. The NHS, this ground is a private ground. Oh. You don't have any right to come here and ask for questions. If you want to ask, you speak to the communication department, they give you the right to do so. This is a private ground. Can, can, public can space is also the premises. Can you direct us to your um, communication? Department? You need to email them on Monday morning saying you want to come and do an interview in this ground. Please. So I will ask you gently to leave. Sure, we'll leave no problem. All right, sir, thank you. No problem at all. It's a bit, a bit aggressive though, eh? Sorry? Is it not a bit aggressive? We're not doing no, any harm. Not. You are doing a harm, it's going exactly around asking questions. How is a question harm, Sir, bro? If you're asking, if you want to do this, yeah? Just leave the there are, there are procedures to do, go about it. There are procedures. Everybody, every department, every ground has rules. But we so just ask, what's the harm though? The what's rule, the actual harm? yeah, the harm is, you not have any authority going around where we have people, patients, with confidentiality, you're videoing them without their consent. You also need to, we don't, we don't video no on the private consent. ground, where you, in a hospital, where you have sick people, they have confidentiality to their right to be in this place. And our job is to make sure they're safe, they're not in a public place for, people here are sick for some reasons. They're, people you see here, they're all sick for some reasons. Hospital, no? They're in the hospital sure. ground to get comfort. But you come in asking them questions without the department, they also don't know. So they are private, Privacy. It's, it's, it's the staff who was asking for, who was asking if they would mind. If they say no, then we, we, we walked away. Yeah, they, they, won't, they, they would thought the hospital has given you the right to do so. Exactly. Second. They would think the hospital has given you the right to do so. Because everybody that comes here asking but questions. But everybody, everybody, everybody refused. Everyone can complain yeah. about they, they you guys. They all said no. Just, so that's why, that's why, that's why we've been told. No My, one of the senior managers said she's been harassed. She was harassed to ask for questioning. Harassed. That's why I came. Yeah, spoke to a couple of paramedics in Lewisham. Um, yeah. I mean, if I take my, my badge off, yeah. You don't name us. Yeah. I'm sure, we could, we can record your feet or whatever. <laughs> oh, God, I don't know. I don't really want to be on camera. I don't really, no offence, but I just don't want to be fit in this situation, that's all. We're not going to ask no... <laughs> just want to get a perspective from the ground level because all people get in the BBC news, they're not getting something talking to people like, like actually here. But to yeah. be fair, yeah. like, we can't really comment on what's happening like in ICUs and stuff because we don't work there. No, for sure. But I, I want to ask just general questions. If you don't know something, you don't know it. If you don't want it, don't worry. Yeah, I just don't know how, how we're working out. 
I don't think I'm going to comment on that. No, sorry, I just don't know if we're allowed to. You, you, okay, cool. You, you say not allowed. Like, what would happen if you spoke? But it's confidentiality, isn't it? Well, if you uh, is that not like specific information about patients? Mm, no. No. no? It can be generalised as well. So, so if I ask you, what do you think of the lockdown? You say it's a good thing, or it's a bad thing. It's kind of just general, eh? It's kind of a good thing, just because of the fact that like it's dying down. Huh. But then. I think it's having a lot of uh, impact on everyone, especially like us, like mental health wise. All right. Yeah. In a negative way. Kind of, because some people are taking good perspectives out of it, like they're getting to know themselves better, but then some people are like becoming more, much worse in their own state. But. Well, from the pressure of the work or? Personally us, I'm not too sure. I don't know, but I, I just know a lot of people are struggling a little bit at the moment. Okay, yeah, for sure. That's definitely what we're finding around the place, talking to people in the parks and that. Yeah. People are uh, having economic problems, people having psychological issues, uh, things like that. Not able to see their grandchildren and things like this. Yeah. So, just wanted to see what was happening. But okay, maybe we'll, we'll see if any of your colleagues would like to, to discuss. Sorry. Don't worry, no worries. Okay. Thanks, Bye. see you later. We're doing some independent journalism. Why did you want to take part? Uh, we're not allowed to do anything social media. No? Not allowed. Why not? Well, it's because it, we've signed a contract that says that. Really? Okay. Yeah. Huh. Without com the communications department, speaking to our communications department, we're not allowed to do any of it. That's interesting. But is, what, there what? is there a recent thing that you've done all No, that's, that's been a contract. I've been here 20 years. That's a contract where everybody signed. Oh, interesting. Um, so, what? I mean, obviously I believe you. Uh, what about the, the people doing dances and stuff and putting that on social media? That's Are they up getting to them. That's such a, we don't do it here. Are they getting fired for that? Oh, no idea. You'd have to ask their own hospitals if they are, aren't you? I suppose so. Social media thing, I don't use Facebook or anything. Well, I never have. That's good. It's better that way. Facesake, I call it. Put steps you could have what? Facesake. Facesake. <laughs> Facesake. Yeah. No, no, they don't do any. People here, nobody does any interviews unless it's been prearranged. Okay. I see. Yeah. Huh. Alright, cool. Cheers. It's weird how it's social, you know what I mean? Rather than physical, because social means like don't speak to people, but distance implies distance. It's weird. Hi there. Hi. Uh, we're doing some independent journalism for our YouTube channel and we're trying to get some interviews from people here and people on the street. Oh, sorry, we're not, we're not allowed. allowed. You're not allowed? No. You'd have to consult the media team at St. Thomas's. Ah, oh, I see. Thanks. All right, thanks anyway. <laughs> I have to have a question. Harassed. That's why I came. My name is Scott. I'm the security well, manager we're, we're here. We're definitely not harassing people. Don't exactly, worry. but you don't have a right to be here. Yeah. So do you are wrong. Exactly. Well, I don't know about that. Yeah, it's you are 100. Like it's like I private, come it's in myself ground. in your house to make the, the exactly. The it's rules. a private it's not, ground. It's no, no, NHS. It's not no, fair. I understand. It's but the there's, private ground. There's members of the public over there. Do they have a right to be here? Yeah, they have a right to sit down. Yeah, but, of course. I, but I don't. Yeah, you don't have no. a right. To, you don't have a right to ask questions. You're not You're not. Yes. But I'm asking you a question. Listen, sir. Please. So you don't have the right to come here and ask people private questions. Okay. Yeah, you only have a right to come here, ask these questions you're asking, mm -hmm. if the communications department has given you a right to do so. Okay. Yeah? So no freedom of speech? No. There's freedom of speech, yes. But there's freedom of speech on how you do it. Exactly. Oh, I agree. You're a press man. Sorry? Are you a press man? No. Okay. Just a normal guy? Walking around. Sure, asking we're people asking people questions. on the street. Yeah, so, yeah you oh, would have so done down the street, the street yeah. no, not no, coming yeah. to other people's compound and asking them such questions. All right. Yeah, so, yeah, no yeah, this way. This is the best way out. This way? Yes, this sir. Way, yeah. Anyway, you know, guys, the rules bar, you try. I don't know the rules. Come on. You, know, you, know you are not a small rules. boy, yeah? You know press I'm not a you boy know. either, man. Come on, you don't, don't have three years old. Yeah, oh, it's all right. We're just trying to ask people questions, man. Um, the thing is, you, you have a right to ask questions. Nobody's yeah. asking that. It's when you start videoing people, recording people's questions. Then not video anyone, man. No, that's where the problem show you. is. No, I'm, I'm, not, I mean, I'm not going to do that. Right. You understand? So you, ask, you have problems when you start asking questions on a private ground. Yeah. 
if the cluster is open for everyone, the doors will open. There's no security anywhere. We have barriers. If it's a public place, you can come and sit down. It's a private ground. So if you want to come here and ask questions, email the communications department and they will tell you you have the right to do so or not. All right. Yeah? I will try that. Okay, you try that on Monday. Yeah? Cool. All right. All right, uh, let's go then, eh? Yeah, the way is this way. Hello. Hi. What's your perspective on the lockdown and the whole situation? Uh, well, as soon as I heard that there was going to be a lockdown, I was against it for, for various reasons, because I don't really believe that you should ever lock down people who are healthy and, and free. Um, but when I look more into it, um, I do believe that there's, a, there's definitely a virus which seems to be different to your average virus. Um, but the whole thing has been blown out of proportion in every single way, um, by the police, um, by the government, by the media. The fear-mongering has been totally horrendous. Um, people are afraid to actually leave their houses. And when you look at the deaths, the counting of uh, um, the counting of with COVID-19 instead of of COVID-19. Yeah, I've noticed that. Yeah, it's it's inflating the numbers all the time. They aren't really presenting the data in a way that's um, that's representative. So they're basically misrepresenting data to create an effect rather than say, well, you know, let's look at the curve. First of all, it was about flattening the curve. Um, now, if you look at that curve, it's gone like a demodemic curve. But now they're not talking about that. They moved the goalposts. Right. Um, so now they've moved the goalposts on to, let's just lump in all the deaths that we can find. Let's lump in all the care homes and let's put up some great big red numbers on the screen. You know, like 30,000 dead. So now everybody's saying, 30,000 dead, that's terrible. That's a terrible epidemic. But there's one other thing. They don't put the deaths in any perspective. So nobody ever says 600,000 people die in the UK every year. Yeah. You know? Right. Um, how many people die of the flu? How many people die of suicide? Um, what are the normal numbers? Nine million people die of hunger every year in the world. Um, so the World Health Organization, they want to vaccinate everybody, but why don't they want to, to, uh, to save those children who are dying of hunger? I would say it's probably depopulation. Yeah, but you, yeah, if you... Because they, they kind of mention it all the time. They mention depopulation, so uh, probably that. Oh, I've got another question for you. What, what, do you. what would you say to somebody if they hear you saying that about the virus, about the situation, and they don't believe you? What would you suggest them to do? Um, I'd start with the data, because uh, I'm an analyst. i say, well, look at the data. Um, uh, look, at, look, at what, look at how they're coding the deaths. Um, look at the people who are dying of, of natural causes who are being attributed to COVID-19. I mean, these are all facts. They, these are all well-published facts that you can find online. Um, you don't have to go into any uh, sort of shady conspiracy theories. You can actually talk about facts. There's, there's actually no test for COVID-19. Right. There's no test. I've had the confirmation about that from NHS 111. Hmm. They're testing for coronavirus. So when they tell you that you've tested positive for COVID-19, you've in fact tested positive for any coronavirus. Yeah, I heard something like that. Yeah. Classic. Okay. Yeah, so it's very it's interesting to hear that about the tests. Um, hmm. What do you think people should do in this situation right now? What would you what would your call to action be? Well, I think people could do a number of things. Firstly, I think they could write to their MPs and keep writing. And I, everybody in the country wrote to their MP and said, "We need we need you to look at the deaths data. We need you to clarify if the test works. We need you to do all these things." You know, there's about three or four points that you can mention. Um, I would advise people also to look up lockdownskeptics.org, which is a very good website, um, which goes into all the reasons why we shouldn't have a lockdown. Um, then, so as well as writing to your MP, you can create your own leaflets. Uh, you can you can walk around with your dog if you have a dog and meet people and talk to them. Um, and get chatting to them and, and explain that there's a 0.2% death rate. Um, are you willing to take the risk when bearing in mind there's a 0.2% death rate right. from this illness? Um, I mean, I think the problem is we've sort of been dumbed down as a, as a nation and people don't really understand the concept of civil disobedience. Um, but I think in the, in the end, um, we have to just um, practice civil disobedience, possibly. Okay. I think that's the only answer sometimes. Because you know that... Um, when the, what is it? When the law becomes something, tyranny, tyranny becomes justice, or 
um, you, you know, ty tyranny, um, when tyranny reigns, um, rebellion is, uh, is what you need to do. I got it, I got it. I don't remember the one you're trying to say. Yeah, when tyranny becomes law, rebellion becomes duty. That's it, that's it, yeah. I wish I could have said that so eloquently. Oh, no worries. All right, it's cool. Thanks for the help. Thanks for the interview. Okay, you're and welcome. We're going to keep going and see what else we can find. The lockdown has had absolutely no effect. When you look at the data and, and the death rates and this sort of thing, after it was imposed around about 20th of March, we should have seen a couple of weeks later a, a dip in the, in, in the infection rates and the death rates. Nothing is shown. So that, that, that means that, first of all, it wasn't, um, it wasn't needed and it's had no effect. So why are they continuing it? It makes no sense. Unless they're somehow trying to keep us under control in, in some sort of a, almost a ransom situation, you're going to stay in this, in this lock-up situation until you get your vaccine, or, or what? Because this, this um, contagion, whatever it might be, is not going to go away. It is out there. Everybody is going to get it. And it's a case of you know, whether we acquire herd immunity before we get the, the virus, uh, the, the vaccination, or not. I think we probably will. If you look at um, Sweden, Sweden's doing quite well. But their, their death rate is, is a bit higher than, than two neighboring countries, uh, Denmark and Norway. But then again, um, they, they, they're acquiring their, their herd immunity quite quickly. Norway and Sweden will take the same pain over a, um, Norway and Denmark will take the same pain over a much longer time. Okay, cool. Uh, what do you think about the tracking app that's been introduced? That's the thin end of the wedge. That's essentially giving away our freedoms. <laughs> And I think that is a uh, that will be a, a, um, a thin end of the wedge to get us into some way of, of um, tracking us personally. That will be either a, a tattoo, supposedly, but more likely an RFID chip, mm. and that is going to lead into um, universal basic income and the sort of thing. In which case, we are nothing more than a herd. Um, yeah. Okay. So, what would you suggest if people are opposed to this type of thing? What would you suggest people to do? What, in terms of tracking app? Yeah, we start there. Leave your phone at home. Don't use it. If they insist that you have it, don't, don't take your phone with you. Um, when you look at the, the Swedish model, that what they've done is they've said essentially they will, they will protect their, their vulnerable groups, which is sort of the 60 plus, which when you look at the uh, demographic data, they are the vulnerable ones. Low, uh, less than 60, you're not, in the, in, you're not at risk. Yeah. So... Um, get out, do what you need to do, because the economic inc impact is going to be far worse than anything that this could, could serve up in the, in the um, contagion. We're talking about, uh, I think they, they're saying something like a 30% de um, uh, decrease in the economy. That would mean that the other two-thirds is going to have to make up for the same taxation. So you're looking at doubling the tax um, taxation. Mm. That's not going to go down well. That is going to hobble the economy for decades to come. Yeah, it looks like that. Yeah, it's pretty strange stuff. So, what do you think will happen if you could give a type of prediction maybe with the information that you have? What do you think will happen over maybe the next three weeks? Because it looks like they're going to announce another continuation of this situation, right? Well, what is what is happening within uh, a few weeks is we're going to come to the end of the um, government supported uh, what's it? Job, re job retention. At that point, I think people are going to get uh, really quite um, tense because they're starting to lose their, their jobs, they're starting to lose their, um, their incomes. At that point, I think people are going to start realizing that, you know, if you don't have any money, it doesn't matter whether there's food in the shops or not, mm. you can't buy it. Right. It's interesting. I saw some, some ads around the place talking about mental health helplines, family helplines, child helplines and food bank helplines. Scary times, man. Obviously, these things existed before the situation, but I imagine it's been amplified greatly. And talk, talking about a record number of people using food banks, this is not a solution. This is a, a evidence of a huge problem, right? Yeah, this is supposedly a first world country, and we've got food banks for you know, a large proportion. Um, that's not a good sign. And certainly the U.S. is starting to um, have uh, food supply problems. Yeah. Um, and that's not going to go away. I mean, food supply typically takes a long time to, to fill the pipelines and, and get uh, food coming out the other end. Um, so this could go very badly wrong. Um, London probably won't see it because London's being such a big place, it will be kept well supplied. But I think some of the smaller places could really suffer. All right, cool. Uh, let's end that one there. Thanks for your contribution. Right, let's continue. All right, thanks, man. Cheers. Uh, so uh, how has the lockdown affected you? 
Well, I'm I'm working from home, so which is good. Mm -hmm. I work with student accommodation, and then is I can do everything online. Mm -hmm. It's affecting because actually today is the first day that we leave our neighborhood right. after 20 of March. So we just decide to come here to see the rivers, and and it's good. You know, it's healthy. But we are not moving around like we have a park next to the house, and the only place that we go uh, and supermarket. So it's affecting because obviously we, especially in London, that rains a lot. Yeah. We all wait for this period to go out and now you have to stay at home. So it's a bit, yeah. A bit difficult. Yeah. Yeah, yeah obviously. So and I've it's sad because everything that is happening is really sad. Yeah, it is. Um, I've been to a few parks, quite a few parks in London and there's been a lot of people, a lot of people out. Yeah, a I lot of people. A lot in of people now as well. I told my mom maybe everyone is tired to stay at home so at least to enjoy a bit the sunshine and yeah but we have to respect right distance and I don't see that much so people are not respecting the well in fact I mean there's a there's some other scientists speaking out some scientists that are saying that the distance is is nonsense oh, really? yeah and also the the man in the in the government who was an advisor I can't remember his name now I need to get that in my head but he had to resign he had to resign his job like a few days ago because he broke the social distancing guidelines. Ah, yeah, yeah, it's fine. So maybe he doesn't believe it. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. said, oh, we need to do it, we need to do yeah, it. Yeah, and he exactly. doesn't do it. Yeah, yeah. Seems a bit weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, do you know, how is, what's happening in Brazil right now? Is it a similar situation? In reality, it's not because we have a stupid president, as you might know, <laughs> that not respecting any, any rules at all. Uh, people are respecting by themselves, you know, because especially governments for each state, yeah, they decide so what they go. have to do. Uh, the health system is not good as here. I mean, the spaces in the hospital, mm. so all the intensive care are full already. Right. So they are trying to use like a st football stadiums as well to, to use as hospitals. Mm -hmm. But the problem is that the economy in Brazil is not as strong as here. So they are really scared about the impact of the economy here because here we have a lot of help for business, for people. Yeah. Uh, but in Brazil, it's not like that. So he said economy in first place mm. and people can die. So that's why everyone is upset. I see. Because here we are worried about people and not economy. Well, the, the, maybe you're right. But another perspective is this. If people don't work and there's no tax money, no, there's no, no money. I'm there's no I'm money to pay the NHS. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm agree with you. I'm not saying that obviously, if someone uh, depends to, to work, that is essential work, they must go out. But now in Brazil, that you have cities full of people, people going to the beach, so opening shops. So you know, there is mm. no middle term like, mm. like here we go to phases, we go to steps to slow the economy. In Brazil, everyone is having a normal life in a lot of cities. Brazil. <laughs> yeah, so are, I have to say I, I'm in favor of that. Um, okay, one more thing. Uh, you know uh, the immune system to be healthy. What what do you think you should do to be more healthy? Well, I believe I got the corona. You know, I got really bad in the end of March. Oh yeah. So yeah, I stayed 15 days really bad. Uh, luckily, I, I believe my mom got before because she got uh, uh, mild symptoms and we lived together. But I felt quite bad yeah. actually. I stay in bed. I like I have lack of air. And we are actually speaking about that. If, if I really had, if I still have anticorps and I didn't test it, so I cannot guarantee 100%, mm -hmm. but I had a lot of symptoms. So we are actually speaking about that. If okay. we really created the anticorps, are we really immune already? Because uh, my brother just said this morning that there is a Portuguese guy that got six times yeah. the corona. So I believe there are, there are a lot of things that we don't have any answer yet. Okay. Yeah, there's a lot of misinformation out there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but usually, when you get infected with a virus and you survive, yeah. the body yeah. makes antibodies yeah, 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 and yeah. Uh, it protects you. Yeah. So it's very, it's not really guaranteed. It's very yeah. strange if the government, I've never heard that in my life, and I, I worked in biology for six years, that you don't get antibodies. Strange. Maybe it's right. Maybe, but I find it skeptical. Is a conspiration to move the whole economy? Well, what I could say, what I can say, is that many people are losing their jobs. Huge amounts of money are being lost. The government minister has 75% shares in a vaccine company, and he's pushing his vaccine company. Yeah. They're trying to put in tracking chip no, this on your... Sure. It's I'm crazy. Sure that there's a lot of interest <laughs> in the whole thing. But the thing is, I don't think we... 
normal humans are be able to do something against that. Of course we can. Also, do you really? Absolutely. How? Well, because there's billions of us, many, many people. We're out here doing a video. There's people out there protesting. There's people speaking out on the light, on the internet, many things. Usually it's just fear. It's fear that keep people in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't want fear, man. We want knowledge. So if there is a dangerous virus, we want the real knowledge. But I believe that, you know, when you have something, I know because I study everything in Brazil as well, I study communication and like with the, um, the rigid system in 64 in Brazil and they obviously the, the, the politics dominate everything and they, you know, they have a way to dominate the media and everything, the uh -huh. information and we, we are in the middle of, is this true, is this not true? You know, and then I believe, that's what I told you, that I believe we are a bit with the hands like that. Right. To really believe what is happening or how we can go against that or how, what we should do to really well, discover the truth or... That's it. Well, definitely research as much as you can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's information on the internet that's going to give you a different perspective. Yeah, this, yes, I, I At least that. everything about it, yeah. All right. Okay. Cool. We'll leave it there. Thank, thank you, you for so the... Much. Thank you for the conversation. Okay. Have a nice day. You too. Thanks. See you later. See you.